While it is possible to create tables for MySQL using the SQL tab, we can write commands such as create table and so on. It's much easier to do this just directly through the existing interface. If you look down here on the page for the database itself, not looking at one of the tables specifically, but if I go to the top here and I click on database, or if I go over to the left hand side and I click on this, you'll find that you're looking at the entire database. All the tables will be listed here. We'll, we're able to browse the data in the tables. We can look at the structure of either of the tables. We can run a search, which is basically running a query. Um, same sort of thing we can do by going to the SQL tab here. We can do any of those commands on any table because we're looking at the database as a whole. Now, what we want to do here is create a new table. So I'm going to create a table called users. Number of fields is the number of columns that we want to have. In this case, I'm going to say five. And hit enter. There we go. So I'm going to be creating this table called users. There's the name up there. It's not over on the side here because we haven't finished creating it yet. But this tells me what I am creating. So user ID is going to be my first field. I'm going to pick full name. Full underscore name is the second. Email address. I'm going to have user type. That will eventually point to a user types table. This is going to be a number. And the last field is going to be my password field. So looking at this, user ID. My second column here is the data type. What kind of data type do I want for each of these columns? User ID, that's going to be an integer. So I'm going to go down to int. Full name is a varchar. This is variable character, meaning character, it's text. Var variable means the length of it changes. Not every single field in this column has to be the same length. So that's perfect for full name. It's perfect for email. We just need to specify the length. What is the maximum length we're going to use for the full name? I'm going to say 100 characters. That's pretty long. That should be more than sufficient for this. Email address, because there's a domain name potentially added on to the end of a full name, this I'm going to bump up and say 150 characters. User type, going to be pointing to the user types field. I'm going to use tiny int. I don't need that many different numbers. I doubt there's going to be more than 255 types of users in our system. And the last one here, password. For this, I'm going to use char. So this is similar to varchar. It is a string, but it's going to be fixed length. And I'm going to put in 40 as the length here. We are going to be using the SHA-1 hashing algorithm to encrypt our passwords. The SHA-1 algorithm will always give us a 40 character string. So that's what we want to use here. Now these other columns, what we want to do here, let's see if we can uh, shrink this down a little bit. And we'll scroll over. There we go. Now for the first field, that was our user ID. It is an integer. It's a number. So I'm going to say unsigned for that one. For the user type, I'm going to say unsigned for that one. Unsigned means there's no negative sign that can be used in front of it, so I'm only dealing with positive numbers. User type, user ID, those are only ever going to be positive numbers. Coming over to the extra column, my user ID, my only choice here, auto increment, I want to use that because I want the database to be able to jump to the next number automatically. Every time I add a record, I don't want to have to look it up, try and figure out what the next value is going to be. I want the database to do it for me. And this one right here, primary, I'm going to click on that one, making user ID my primary key. This is going to be the unique value that I use for every single row to make sure every single row has at least one piece of information that is unique. Chances are email address is going to be the same, that's fine but it is going to be possible to have the same user type. It is going to be possible to have the same name. So 
I'm going to make sure that at least this one value is always going to be unique. That's why I've got that set as my primary key. My storage engine, I'm going to go with my default NODB and my collation, which is what character set I want to use. For that, I'm going to go with UTF-8 General CI. The CI stands for Case Insensitive. That means if I'm searching for some records and I'm trying to sort the results, it doesn't matter if it's an uppercase or lowercase letter. Capital A, lowercase a are going to be treated like the same thing. It also means not just when I'm sorting, but also when I'm searching through the values and I'm trying to find a match. It doesn't matter if I write an uppercase or lowercase a, it's going to find either one of those. Okay, so I've got my five fields, I've defined the attributes, I've defined the user ID with the primary key auto increment. These things are defined, so save. And there we go. Here is the SQL command. So if you ever wanted to write that, phpMyAdmin gives you that example so you can use it later on as a reference. Okay, and there's our table. Our five fields, user ID, full name, email, user type, password, unsigned, unsigned, auto increment, and down here at the very bottom, primary key is user ID. And that's it. We've created a table using just that built-in form that comes with phpMyAdmin. Remember, starting from the database, we can't create a table from inside of a table.